Uh, it feels crazy, man, because you know, like, it's like they it's always been like house guys and trance guys, you know, and like we've gotten close, like Qbert, kind of like you know, number two, like he got like we, our, like people from our world got close, but I've always felt like oh man, they always give it to these house guys and these techno guys. So for me to actually be to win it, I kind of feel like I. I represent our whole world, like all the diggers and all the turntablists and all the, you know, battle kids and mixing kids and just all the outcasts, all the underdogs, you know, because um, for me, categorically, it was always like all the house and techno dudes. It was kind of almost like their contest and we sort of infiltrated, kind of like Winter Music Conference in, in Miami, same deal. It's like it was always these house guys, and techno guys, and, and I felt like we never got any shine. Um, so I'm stoked that, you know, I was able to sort of I feel like I'm sort of waving the banner for all those guys who, who I, you know, are contemporaries of mine versus, you know, that whole other side of the world. So it's kind of nice to actually, you know, however many years later to get that award. I'm stoked on it. You know. It used to be mixtapes. You'd trade them. You know what I mean? Like that was the only way. It's like if you knew somebody and they had a tape, you'd go, oh, "Can I get a dub of that?" That kind of thing. But you know, eventually it ended up being. Uh, being a situation where you could actually go and download that tape. If someone was talking about it, you could search out for it and find it, or else you'd find somebody online who would trade it with you. And it wasn't the whole process of dubbing it. It was like, here, I'll just send you the files, you know? And um, so I think that opened up a lot of doors to a lot of people who would not have normally heard uh, people from overseas or other people from other crews or people who were like in, in rural towns, you know, like I think the whole Rhyme Sayers crew and all of those guys, they were, you know, Minneapolis. There was nobody really knew, I think at the time, anything about Minnesota. And those guys, it opened up a lot of doors um, for them, for their sound. Same thing with like the Bay and Arizona for us, everyone. It sort of opened up doors. You could be in Stockholm and you could be like, yo, I'm really into this sound that I found from North Carolina. You know what I mean? Like, so that kind of thing is, I think it opened up crazy doors and for me, um, it also, you know, I, I was all about like, sure, have all my mixes out there. I'd rather have them out there and be labeled correctly and sound somewhat decent than, rather than like a kid uploading a really shitty quality version because he only had so much bandwidth or whatever. So I was always uh, strong, feeling strong about like sharing as much of this shit as possible because really at the end of the day, it's not really my music to charge or do anything with. I'm just sort of a, I'm sort of the conduit between me, the music and the listener. Sounds are starting to fuse more and people are taking more chances, which I think is good. Um, it used to be like, you know, I'll use like a rave as an example. Like you had the hip hop room, the house room, the drum and bass room. Now you get all these guys who are playing all kinds of different shit, you know. You get a, an A track or a craze who, you know, most people used to just know them for doing their DJ battle routines and now they're playing electro or they're playing, you know, Miami bass or, you know, drum and bass or whatever in their mixes. And that's kind of cool to me because it allows people to, to stretch out a little bit more and depending on what the party wants or, or what the artist is trying to, to, to throw out there uh, I think it opens up more more doors and allows people to be a, more versatile and, and have more music to be heard um, but I'm also a big fan of like you know of DJs who can play everything can play house can play drum and bass can play funk can play you know uh, rock whatever um, and I think Nowadays, we're brewing more of those people. Like, more of those people are seeing, hey, I can play whatever I want, um, versus you know, a guy who's like, oh, I have to just be a trance guy, you know. And it's, you know, there's going to be plenty of people who just zero in on one style of music, and that's what they love. But it's, there's so much good music out there, and I think more and more people are gravitating towards being versatile, which is what I, I you know, I saw that early on via people like Bambada, Cool Herc, and everything. Like the early hip hop guys were the epitome of what everyone's doing now. Who's infusing everything and um, it's really weird we went through like a segregated musically segregated time and now it's, it's sort of liberating it's a musically liberating time so everybody likes all kinds of music it's just you have to sort of find the, the music that people gravitate towards because nobody listens to one style of music it's that'd be like eating one kind of food you know I just eat macaroni and cheese that's it you know I think it's important to to gather and dig online as much as you can. But I think it's also important to go out and find um, old record stores and used records and used mediums, whether it be CDs or whatever, 
um, because that's where you find stuff that everybody isn't privy to. I mean, as much as you think the internet is as wide and broad as it is, which it is, um, the funny thing is you start to hear, I've seen in the circles that I go through, and whether it be Vegas or some underground club or overseas, everyone's playing a lot of the same mixes that are being pumped out through all the blog spots or everything out. So that's like you, that's good because globally this music is getting heard, but the problem is, is people are limiting themselves as to, you know, if you're a fisherman, you throw out three nets, you're only going to get three nets worth of fish. If you throw out 70 nets, you're going to get 70 nets worth of fish. And I feel like people need to be throwing out more nets to other places and other mediums. When you go out digging for records, sometimes you're looking for that one record and you go, oh, it's this over in this other stack and karmically something will hit you and you'll be like, holy fuck, this record is like, I wouldn't have got this unless I was in this place, in this frame of mind and I flipped it over and I saw X, Y, and Z and it's like that one thing might end up being the cornerstone to your whole mix and, um, you know, there's plenty of those online where you're like listening and you stumble across something but... I feel like it's super important to not limit yourself just to one style of digging, but to absorb as much as you can and try and put as much as you can into your sets to make you sound a little bit different because that, oddly enough, a lot of the young kids who come up, I think, are, are so influenced by other people that they end up sounding a lot like their influences or sounding like a lot like their, their contemporaries and, you know, that's okay for a while, but if you want to evolve, you have to find your own sound and there aren't too, too many people, I, I feel, out. Um, that have their own sound. There are a few, but there needs to be more. There used to be a million back in the day when, when you couldn't share records. It's like you would go and see that one DJ who had that one exclusive record, and you'd be like, this guy's got the fucking illest record collection. and Cover up the label. Yeah, cover up the label. What is that? I don't know. I mean, now there's like so many different ways to find out what other DJs are playing, and, and that's cool, but at the same time, it's uh, it's important, I think, to, to stand out musically and, and take risks and try different things and you know I'd like to think that that's one of the reasons why I'm number one because I I went I did the hard I went the harder road I like some really abstract shit and when I'm able to do me and the crowd of people I don't have to really entertain all the all the masses because it's kind of like that's that's when I feel I'm at my strongest that's when I'm the most stoked it's kind of interesting though because um, you know with all the fame you get a lot of the masses that come out to shows you know whether it be like a Vegas or a Hollywood show sometimes, it's like they want to hear the tunes they know. And so you're, it's a constant battle of you trying to shove like songs they might not have heard or different versions on them. Um, but then you got to sandwich, sandwich it between something that's familiar, you know. I've got a couple mixes I'm working on. I got an album that I'm working on. Um, it's just, and since I have no deadlines, I'm kind of, it's the worst because I, I don't have anybody cracking the whip on me, but um, I have this Hellraiser project that I'm working on. It's an album of me and a couple of different guests that I've been wanting to work on for a long time. Um, and that's a whole completely different project that I was hoping to get done by, by the end of the year, but it's looking like probably more like the middle of next year. Um, and then, uh, you know, mixtapes, obviously I got mixtapes. I'm doing a lot of touring. The whole DJ Hero video game's coming out, and that's going to take a lot of my time because they're going to want to promo that and uh, you know I'm stoked to be in that so it's kind of kind of a cool thing too so there's all you know there's always a million things going on remixes I got a knockout that I'm fucking months behind on you know that kind of shit so it's 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 there's never I never get home after a show and sit down and go man I'm bored it's always like oh I'm home oh fuck I got like nine things I got a knockout yesterday so which is good but it's also sort of a stress because you're constantly you know if I could split myself in three I'd be, be good to go I played it, uh, I can't say that I'm all that good at it, but I've only played it a couple times and demoed it a couple times, but um, that's the thing, I, I think I need to really, I need to get uh, get it, sit home and actually get good at it in order to um, to play it, because I, the last thing I want to do is not be able to play my, myself play well in the game, because <laughs> that would like sort of be, you know, you know, look at Z-Trip, can't play Z-Trip, you know, that's not a good look. What's up? This is Z Trip. You're checking out DJ Sue and the Cobbles, yo.